Yo, how you doing? Cobra here. Hope everybody's well. Um, I've decided to create a small video series on official servers. Um, this one's going to be on PC official servers. The reason being is I've seen a lot of videos and been asked a lot of questions recently about um, why it's so difficult to play on official servers. Um, a lot of the videos I'm seeing on YouTube right now talks about um, it's not worth playing official anymore. Um, it's full of hackers and cheaters and all this kind of thing. And to be completely honest, I've played Daisy for a lot of years now, and in a way that is correct. So there are um, there are hackers and there are cheaters on the official servers. However, it's not really an accurate reflection because there isn't that many uh, on a lot of these servers. Now don't get me wrong, there is a few. Um, I've actually come into contact with a couple myself um, and if we're being honest there is no way you're going to beat them on here if you do run into one or two of them. So if you do find them then my advice is just to stay away from them unless they're actually shooting at you and in which case you don't really stand much of a chance because even if you hit them 30 times in the head with an LAR they've probably got god mode on and they're probably going to survive. So. I'm going to now show you a way to play official servers and to prosper, to massively prosper and hide your gear away successfully um, and also showing you that actually it's quite sad that a lot of people don't want to play official anymore um, and this is a reason why you now can if you know what you're doing. Okay so the first thing I would say to any official player is you are going to have to accept the fact that it is lonely on here. It is a solo journey unless you're playing with a friend or two. Second thing, really important thing, and this is where a lot of Daisy players go wrong, you need to ask yourself the question, what type of player am I actually going to be? Are you, for instance, a base builder? Are you just there for the PvP? Or are you, really, what I've been doing for quite some time now uh, a bit of a nomad where you don't actually have a base but you have a series of dig sites or a series of areas that you put your stuff in um, so no one can actually continually attack you and uh, take all your gear so I've gone and played in all versions of this game so I've been a PvP -er pretty successfully at times I was rubbish to start with but I got a lot better I've been a base builder, I've spent many many hours building various different bases, various different um, um, designs. That is the second lesson that people need to understand here. Every base is raidable. There isn't any such thing as an unraidable base. That's a fact. I don't care what anyone else tells you, you can make it difficult for people to raid you. Yes you can. But there is no such thing as a complete unraidable base. So now we've got those little things uh, out in the open, those starter things out in the open. Now it's kind of time to get into it in a little bit more detail. So one of the first things I do is I choose what map I want to play. Now do I want to play Livonia, Cherno, I've played Deer Island, obviously that's not on official servers. Um, and i played the Mausk and the new Essica maps. Now obviously on the official servers at the moment all they actually produce is the Cherno or the Livonia servers. So you're kind of restricted to two to begin with, unless you're playing modded versions. Now this is really important, deciding what map you want to play. Because whatever map it is you choose, you need to understand the map you're playing. So you need to put in the time and the hours to explore the entire map and know what is where and some of the best places to either build a base or to hide or to PvP or to loot or, you know, to, to put your gear. So for me, I like to live on Livonia servers. Um, I love Cherno, but Cherno's a place I come where I need to either base raid or gear up pretty quickly. So that brings me on to my third bit of advice. Once you've decided what map you want to play and you're confident and comfortable with the map, the really important thing now is to work out 
your preferred routes. So, as I've already said, I jump over to Cherno quite a bit if I've died and I need to loot up quickly or if there is a, a decent base that I found um, that really needs raiding. So on this occasion, as you can see, I've spawned in. I'm a freshie. I have nothing on me at all. In fact, let's just have a look. So actually, I've got a pair. All right. So I've got a pair on me. And the route I'm going to be taking is I'm going to head straight up to NWAF. Now, a lot of players kind of mix that up. What they do is they will go through town to town. They'll stay on the coastline. Um, they'll get into a little bit of PvP, maybe die quite a few times, get frustrated. Um, and then there's the other type of people who like to go military base to military base. So Zlenengorst will be some most people's first hits if you're if you're one of those type of players. And then off to NWAF, um, VMC along the route, and then end up at Tizzy. For me, personally... I've done all of these different things, and the most successful, the most profitable thing I have found, in my experience, is to forget all of that and just head straight for North West Airfield. The reason for that is, obviously it's the biggest military on the map, but secondly, yeah, where, it's, where it's so big, even if there are groups of players up here, you have a, a high chance of avoiding them. Secondly... On your way up here, you will find and you will run into various helicopter crash sites where you'll find decent loot. And it is the biggest base on the map, as I've previously said, where you will find all your kits, a few decent guns. And if you're lucky, as I generally go through this route myself, I end up starting from here with nothing to fully kitted with either an LAR, VSD or an M4, I'd say maybe one in one in four, I'll end up with a Blaze or something else as my, my most uh, prolific gun, my best gun. So take a little look at this and just stick with me for the time being and see how I get the job done. And after we've done that and we've looted up, and let's just be clear here before I go into that, I'm looting up because I haven't got anything on me at all. I haven't got a base at the moment. I've been off official servers for a couple of months, so the pickings are going to be pretty ripe. So I need to gear up, grab a decent gun. If I get into PvP, then great. If I don't, then the next course is to either server hop to a Livonia server and start a base, or who knows, I may even build one on Cherno. But anyway, this is where we are right now, so stick with us, and we'll see how we end up. So here we are then, just move slightly north of the map up into Gorka. I had a bit of an issue with my last character. I uh, spawned back in after logging out due to it being dark and not having any night vision. As I spawned in, um, there was a guy with a gun and who managed to kill me. So that happens, that's Daisy, and we started again with this character. So like I say, we're not far off NWAF. Um, we're just going to have to loot this town very briefly to see if we can find any more food. And I'll show you what I've currently got on me. Well, it looks like this has already been looted. Okay, so as you'll see on my character, I've barely got anything. I've managed to find a blaze with about 14 rounds. I've got a sharpened stick, 80 grade backpack, a couple of little bits of food, so a bit of tuna sardines i managed to find some jam and some honey i think it was yeah honey um i'm full on water i'm in pretty good shape to go and complete our first run of nwaf once we arrive i could do with a little bit more food but what i don't want to do is give my position away too much here the server's uh, medium to full right now so there's going to be activity all around me. So let's hope I can uh, get through this pretty much unscathed. So what we've got then? Nothing. Absolutely not cool. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, multi bits. We definitely need them. Nice one. Trying to sort this guy out. 
Now since the last update, zombies are obviously a lot harder to kill and they cause a little bit more damage so we need to be careful of that. I can't have that dude running after me. Oh fuck me, there's another one. Come on, come on, deal with him. He's down. Oh, great, there's another one. Oh fuck, there's two. Okay, we don't really want to be getting into that if we can help it. Let's go lock them in a shed. Ah, oh, wonderful. We have a shovel. And that's important, and I'll show you why in a second. Let me just lock these boys back in. Ah, oh, fuck me. Alright. Okay. So we've managed to attract quite a few more. Which means we're now going to have to deal with these. See if we can get out of here. Okay, now, it's a uh, shovel's quite important. It's one of the best uh, tools, or most important tools, that I always carry with me. Um, the reason, main reason, two main reasons. First one is, it's if you're going to survive on here, on any of these servers, then you need a multiple sources of food supply. So, matches is really essential, because with matches then you can work on animals and uh, cook the fat, which keeps you going for a hell of a longer. Um, when you're in a situation where you're getting low on food, it's always good to um, take care of the greenhouses and get some seeds and that's where the shovel first use for the shovel comes in so for me um, if I'm ever close to running out I've always got water on me and a shovel with seeds and I'll just dig a plot and um, we'll use that and continually refill second reason for a shovel is you need it to raid bases so shovel's really important. Now there's Radio Zenit up there. There's a castle not far from there. Now, that has generally got bases in it on pretty much every popular server. So we'll have a quick little look at that on the way to NWAF. Now I have been pretty quiet. I haven't shot any animals so far. Um, due to the fact that the servers um, it's been fluctuating from medium to high um, at one point it was full so I'm expecting some contact just up here okay so there was a gunshot in the distance I'm not sure whether you would have been able to hear that or not but I definitely did and it was coming from NWAF so this is going to be interesting now this is the question that a lot of people uh, will be in two minds about. So there's gunshots over to my left. Some people would run straight to that, but it's easy to get distracted from what your mission kind of is, from what your objectives are. Now for me, I've not come all this way to run over and get into a 50-50 battle with, um, with a blaze, without a scope. So it's not the ideal weapon to have really at this moment in time yes it can be one shot but without a scope from a distance I'm gonna struggle to get that headshot and as you can see now my health is starting to deteriorate so here's the castle now there is a helicopter crash site to the right of the castle here and the question is is someone based up in here well, I can't see anything on top at the moment, so there isn't any tents up there. We may need that, I may come in handy shortly. That's what we'll do for the time being. We'll dry off here. Tundra, I haven't got any ammo for that. The heli site is literally over there, beyond those trees. But it's uh, it's not smoking, so obviously it's not there.
Okay, so now we're just about to get into Grosino. And we need food. Okay, so I've just grown some fruit as you can see, some tomatoes and zucchinis, and that should keep me going uh, throughout this um, NWAF run. something that I do need. Compass. Another box of M4 rounds. So everything appears shut. Can't see anyone. over there. Okay, let's go with that now, shall we? Uh, beans, there we go. We have to see that.
So we set off a little trap here. I know someone's nearby because I've just heard some gunshots. Uh, it's dark, I've got no night vision. So I've let off a couple of shots and I've lobbed a flare down there, as you can see. It looks like I'm inside that red crate. Hopefully, whoever that was will shoot again. So now we just need to find out what the fuck that is. So there's a guy somewhere over there. There he is. What we don't need to do is wait for him to come out. He needs to come out, so come on. We could go round and try and get a shot on him, because I know he's in that last room. He's probably logging. I can't see him in there now. <sighs> I can't see him in there. door shut which would indicate he's in there he ain't in there he ain't in there That door's locked. He's locked, isn't he? Well, there is a way of catching a guy like this. waiting for him to log back in. Oh, so there's another shot. It's not far from there. I'm going to get up here and hide. Because I know that that isn't far. Now that is VMC. Let's go.
Come on, baby. See what you got. You coming out of here or not? my friends see what you got then I'll take the grenade off you I'll take your drinks off you the matches that we've just fucking lost oh look at the food okay we'll take all the food from you take all of that Take that, that, anything else? That, that. It's not KAM, is it? Okay, it's interesting. Take the KAM. I think we're good guys. So let's go. So thanks for your contribution, my friend. <clears throat> let's get out of here. So that was nice and easy. Sort out this gear. And we will be ready to now jump over to Livonia and start some form of base build, I should imagine. Okay, so that looks pretty safe to me, so let's have a little look at what we've got here. Now in terms of weapons, um, I like the KAM. It's not too bad. It's not a top grade gun. Um, that we don't need. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take this out, we're going to disarm that, put that back, lob that somewhere, miles away, there you go, see you later. So, that can go there, shovel we're going to need later can go there, we don't need a stick right now, we can always do that later. Okay, so we've just server hopped from Shinaris over to a Livonia server. And as you can see over there to the right, that tower, water tower, that's by Lauer. Um, I'm heading down southwest of the map um, between Toplin, Zalisi and Palana because that's where um, I generally find a lot of bases. So I need to have a little look to see who's about, what's happening on this server, if there's any bases I can raid, and more importantly, to find a new home. Now the good news is, after an hour and a half on Shinaris, looting a couple of towns, hitting in WAF, uh, killing a guy up at uh, VMC, I've now got a half decent gun, a KAM, um, I've got a blaze scoped, which is very dangerous now, um, and I am fully kitted out. The only thing I haven't got is night vision. Now this server is typically quite a hot server, so um, this is usually anywhere between medium to high. Uh, right now it's at medium, which gives me a, uh, a chance of locating a number of bases and being able to raid them um, I'm hoping to find a couple with people in or nearby so we can get a little bit of PvP content out of base for you but um, if not then we'll see uh, what we stumble into one of the things I usually find on Livonia um, PC official servers is there's no shortage of bases but they're all raided bar maybe four or five at any one time that's that's what i generally find 
I mean, there are times where I'll find a load of bases uh, fully built, all ready to be raided. Um, and then there are, more often than not, a load of times where I can run around the whole map, visit every town over the space of three hours, and find every single thing raided. But that's part of the game, you know. You have to accept that. Sometimes you're going to be frustrated. Sometimes you're going to jump into a jackpot. Now, as you can see, um, I am pretty comfortable with running through open fields on here. Now, I would suggest anyone that isn't um, isn't au fait with PvP or just not that good and they're trying to improve themselves in that regard, I suggest you stay away from doing what I'm currently doing uh, and running. That is, like I say, running through with these open fields. The reason why I am is because I'm pretty confident um, when it comes to PvP, so I don't really mind if people see me because they're going to have to get a good shot off and kill me with one hit, really. Um, because if they get a shot off and they miss at quite a distance, then obviously it gives me the upshot on their position. I'm going to be finding them pretty quickly, and then it's a case of who wins that shootout. So. Like I say, for me, it's not really too much of an issue. Um, it also assists getting content for you guys as well. So uh, that's why I'm not really too fussed. I'm not too bothered. Um, and it wouldn't really matter to me either if I was um, running with some top grade guns. So um, if I was with a VSD, LAR, or M4, or anything like that, it wouldn't, I wouldn't deviate from my current style of play. Now the other thing that um, sounds very obvious, but some people ask me these questions. Uh, well, I get asked it quite a lot, actually. And that is, what type of guns do I prefer? And uh, am, I, am I more of a sniper or push people, should we say? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. And that is, it all depends what gun I'm running with. So for me, the most lethal gun on the game, well, the two most lethal gun on, guns on the game are VSD and an LAR. So both of those are one-shot kill guns. Um, a Blaze, believe it or not, is also you know a very strong weapon to have if you're a sniper. So if I'm running with an LAR, then I will tend to push people a hell of a lot more. If I'm uh, running with a VSD or a Blaze, then I will camouflage myself as much as possible. I will play the longer game and look to snipe. Now, which one's more successful? I'd say because I'm pretty good at sniping, uh, a lot of my kills, I'd say probably 60% uh, of my kills are from snipe positions. 40% uh, are from me pushing uh, other players or chasing down other players um, but like I say it's um, when you start mixing those up your percentages goes down so if I'm running with a VSD and I decide I'm going to go and push a player then I know I've got one shot in the round uh, in the chamber so um, even though I can fire more than that if you're looking at um, a blaze for instance you are literally limited to two shots before you need to reload. So that time it takes to reload, luckily you can do so whilst running, but it is it can sometimes be the difference between you being killed or not. Now, a lot of people talk about the M4s now. Yeah, I like M4s also, and again, it's a, it's a gun I'd use to push only. Um, so you'll be, to kill someone, you'll be hitting them anywhere between three to five times with an M4. So, you know, although that's uh, good fun, and, um, you know, you can you can pretty much surprise someone and empty six, seven rounds in them quite easily and kill them. The problem is if you're up against a decent player, especially if they are aware that you're nearby, then that becomes sometimes problematic. Now, part of the skill for me in being a sniper, majority of the time, is that they don't even know that I'm there. 
they won't even hear the shot and they'll be dead without even realizing where it came from who killed them or even what direction it may have come from so when I'm facing uh, solo by myself versus a whole team and I've done that I've done a few videos on that previously um, that can be quite interesting I mean I have been known to take out entire teams with just the blades but to be successful with that if you're up against good players then you need to continually move position and relocate every time you take a shot because the second you fire one they're going to know where you are and there's no way to suppress a blaze either so that's the great thing with the VSD you can get a normalized suppressor and that makes things a lot easier so going back now to what I said in the, the very beginning of this video and that is know the maps that you play know them well uh, spend the time, spend the hours actually properly looking around the map exploring this is where that pays off because I have a number, a large number of locations across both maps, Livonia and Chinaris, um that over a long period of time I was able to draw up a, a bit of a list straight plan of likelihood of where bases could be and generally are so this is one of those locations I'm about to go and have a look at now so this is deep deep in the woods near Zelis or Zalesi as some people call it and this is a another typical location an area where a lot of bases on PlayStation as well as PC and Xbox a lot of people base up around this area getting a little bit of lag here there you go there's a base here doesn't look too sophisticated okay doesn't look like it's been hit either okay so it's not been hit it's got four dial code on it there's a crate in there can I get a better view anywhere oh there's dig site okay there's dig sites in here as well now that's interesting so that's worth having a look at now I'm really good at breaking the three digit code locks um, and I can do that, I can do it within five to six minutes any any three digit code lock. Now four digit code locks are very different so what I've learned on these four digit codes is that a lot of people will put codes um, in relation to either their birthdays or their dates of birth so what I'm going to do is now if you look at the age ranges between <clears throat> the people that generally play Daisy, anywhere between 14, 15, up to about 45, maybe 50, um, you've got a bit of a date range here to go through. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to guess years of birth. So there's no point me going to 2020 because you're not going to be one or two years old and playing this game. So let's go all the way down to, I normally start with 1960s up. Now this is, this can take a bit of time. So let's do the 1990s. Okay, so we know it's not the 1990s. Try the 80s. So the 80s. Let's try the 70s. And if not, we'll go down to the 50s maybe and see how that goes. Oh, there you go. Look at that. 
What was the code on that? 1979. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Straight away, we've guessed a four digit code. So let's have a look at this. Is there another code on that? No, that's code set to normal. But it doesn't look promising. But there are dig sites. So let's have a little look at this. Let's see what we can find in here then. So this is a real simple base. But it's deep in the woods. So it won't be obvious to find. Okay, so a load of bullshit really in there. Let's move some of this out of the way. So we've got that. Nothing really we need. Oh, there's more. In fact, saying that, have I got multi vets? I have, haven't I? Have I got multi vets? I haven't. Okay, we'll take the multi vets. Could do with that. Do with those. I don't. We'll take those. Yeah. Okay. They're the bits I haven't got. Let's see what else we've got there. We never know. We might get lucky. We might find a decent gun or something. We've run into a heli site. There are a couple around here. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> there they are. I'm definitely taking that little baby. Um, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. M4. Nice. We'll take all of those. What's that? Fence kit. Uh, we'll take that for the time being. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And there's more. Once you know where you're looking, if you do know where you're looking, then things do become a lot easier for you. Can I fit that? I need a cooking pot. Yeah, I can fit that in there. Nice one. Okay. Let's get a hold of that. Another one. Looks like the last one. Let's see what's in here. Oh, look at that. LAR. Another LAR. Now I've got a decision to make here, haven't I? I have a decision to make here. <laughs> well, it's quite obvious for me. LAR is the way forward. Are these all good? Worn, worn. What's this? Worn. Hunting scope. That's what we do. Let's see that quickly. Nice. Which is empty. I'll take that now so you can fill that up. Need to put that in there. Need to put that in there. I might as well take one of those as well. Okay. So away we go. Now there's a place um, towards the edge of Bailawa that has a, um, a log cabin in the woods which is um, miles away from any other place. It's just literally hidden just up here. It's a well known spot for most uh, Daisy players who know the Livonia map well. Um, and again generally this is a place where there's always, always bases. Um, so we'll see what, if anything, is here on this server. You always need to be a little bit prepared, a little bit careful here. There's also zombies about. Well, would you believe it? On this occasion, there isn't a base at all. Okay. All right. Now, there are a couple of places not far from here that, um, again, are well, well known hotspot areas for wood bases. So we're going to have a little look at these.
No, nope, nothing there. Now on PlayStation and Xbox, you would find a lot of people base up around those areas I've just been through. Um, not so much so on the PC, but I tend to find that the next spot I'm about to go to, that is more uh, PC related in terms of where PC players uh, tend to put bases. So there are some differences in um, different types of players, different types of consoles. So this is a spot that's pretty popular for both console and PC players. Uh, yet again, this appears to be uh, empty. I did pick up a bit of lag there, but that could be dig sites possibly, but um, I'm not going to ferry around there for hours looking for dig sites. So this is another uh, spot where again I find a lot of stuff generally. Usually the tents or small, um, small little watchtower bases or square rigs or something like that. Always a bit of lag here. Oh, there you go. Straight into a tent. Okay. Let's have a little look here. Wow. Okay. There you go. Straight away, look. So, we've got boots, grenades, we'll take the grenades. Beautiful. Beautiful. Night vision, three night visions. LAR mags, so there must be an LAR or something, something nearby. Uh, take all of that. Need that for ray tools and things. Look at this. Need a belt. Um, we've got one of those. I'll tell you what we do. We take that. Take all the food. That was fat. That's nice. Take that. Do I need rags? Uh, got matches. Have we got matches? Yeah, we've got matches. Okay. So we don't need matches. Is there anything? Oh, look at that. We take that. Um, there I've taken a blaze. That what's that? Defense. We've got gloves. Better take one of those. We don't need boots. Okay. Well, there you have it. That is wide open. Wide open. So many dig sites about. Nope. So, this is where I hide my loot away. I found a spot deep in the middle of the map, in the middle of the woods. And as you can see, I use dry sacks. Here I'm putting two LARs, a load of grenades, and some other bits and pieces. We're going to bury that here. And as you're now about to see, my second site is a crate with an M4, a couple of night vision in, a load of ammo and nails.
And my third crate, I'm going to put the KAM in. As you can see, KAM with a bit of ammo and a little bit of food. Okay, so there we have it. There's my dig sites and time to get out of here.